So this presentation will be looking into the comparison of Darwinism and the Lamarckism, and also the uh, limitations of, of the theory of natural selection. Uh, we can compare the Darwinism and Lamarckism with respect to the long neck of giraffe uh, example. Okay. Uh, according to Lamarck, the ancestors of modern day giraffe uh, developed long neck as a um, acquired character by repeated stretching of their neck in response to an inner need. And the descendants of this original stock developed progressively long necks. So here you can see that originally the giraffes uh, had an ancestor which were short necked. Okay. But uh, as per Lamarck, they kept on stretching their uh, neck uh, as their inner need in the sense here it is not. So obviously, because of their need to uh, reach the leaves higher up on the tree, they had to keep on stretching. And this went on for generations and uh, this resulted in a progressively longer ones. Okay, the giraffes with or the descendants with progressively longer neck. And the longer neck descendants after many generations became a permanent trait. That is what Lamarck explains with respect to a particular uh, development of a particular trait in the species. While uh, Darwin uh, explained this, the same, uh, what you call, uh, pres the presence or the evolution of long neck with respect to the uh, natural selection. So, according to Darwin, the development of a long neck was a spontaneous occurrence, not a, a gradual one, but it was a spontaneous occurrence and it was not, never the result of environmental needs. Some individuals of the ancestral population happened to have longer necks than others, maybe due to mutation. But uh, since it was a beneficial variation, enabling the animal to reach the leaves on higher branches than their short necked contemporaries, this character was proved successful in the struggle for existence. Uh, uh, struggle for existence, especially that is lack of food. Okay, that is a struggle for existence over here. So, in other words, natural selection favored longer neck, which was subsequently passed on to the uh, what we call uh, next generations and the short necked variety being unfavorable got gradually eliminated. So, at the same time the had uh, the ancestral uh, groups had uh, individuals of uh, variation in neck, neck length okay short neck, long neck, medium neck. So, such kind of a group had, had been present and um, since longer neck was a favorable character for reaching the leaves higher upon the tree that particular character or those members with that particular character were uh, selected or favored by natural selection. Okay, and the favored characteristic trait it was passed on to the next generation uh, in greater proportion in the sense more number of next generation had the favorable character. Okay, so uh, when it comes to the next generation what happens is uh, the members um, more members had uh, uh, longer necks than the shorter necked ones and gradually the since the shorter neck character was an unfavorable one it slowly got eliminated from the population and uh, after many many generations the group uh, do have more number of uh, long neck giraffes okay that is how darwin uh, explains the uh, like uh, uh, this character development along a evolutionary path okay so this is how the darwinism and lamarckism is uh, compared. Now, with respect to the theory of natural selection, okay, we are speaking about the theory of natural selection, Darwinism and here we are going to discuss about the limitations. Uh, so, most biologists accept Darwin's theory of natural selection as the uh, like one of the best explanation of evolution, but the theory does not provide a complete answer to all the problems of evolution. Uh, the most serious uh, drawback in uh, Darwin's theory was its failure to identify the mechanism of inheritance. Okay. Uh, uh, Darwin had no clear idea about the origin of variation, how the variations had originated and how this passes to the next generation because at that time it was not explained uh, that is uh, the genetic uh, background of all this were not uh, clear at that time. And for this uh, Darwin had to depend on Lamarck's idea of the inheritance of acquired character. So, there was a limitation over there. Now, secondly, Darwin could not uh, distinguish heritable variations. Uh, he could not uh, distinguish heritable variations uh, which are really responsible for the origin of species from non-heritable variations. Heritable variations are the ones which result in the origin of species.
but he could, uh, Darwin could not distinguish uh, the variations, okay, heritable from the non-heritable variations. And perhaps then the time was not uh, like, uh, uh, at that time it was not completely known. The solution to this particular problem, uh, especially with respect to the heredity, it came only after the rediscovery of Mendel's laws. And this could actually uh, give a correct explanation for the variations, different types of variations. But at that time, at the time of Darwin, Darwin did not come to know about the Mendel's contribution or Mendel's work, even though it was completely done, but it was not uh, known to Darwin. Now, according to natural selection, only useful and favorable variations are passed on, isn't it? Hence, this theory cannot give a satisfactory uh, explanation to the occurrence of vestigial organs, right? And uh, uh, found in many of the organisms, including humans, okay? Uh, then another one was like uh, if new species are evolved by the accumulation of small favorable variations under the force of natural selection, a number of intermediate forms or what can be referred as a transitional forms uh, must be met with in an, any population. But such forms are never found in most cases. That is, uh, the, <coughs> during the course of evolution, in many cases what happens is intermediate and transitional forms could not be traced back okay so many times it was uh, found that it was a uh, sudden transformation from one to the other form there were no intermediate forms uh, during the course of evolution so even that one could not uh, be clearly understood under the theory of natural selection now over specialized structures over specialized uh, structures means uh, like huge antlers of uh, certain deer then uh, tusks of uh, moth the long spiral tusks of mammoth okay uh, etc. We are not we are more harmful to the one who owns it than it was helpful. Uh, so how can these organs reach such a harmful stage if natural selection uh, it, uh, uh, it favors only the useful variation? So that particular question it was not answered as per the theory of natural selection. Uh, Darwin uh, considers these organs as sports organs and uh, this which according to Darwin did not play any role in evolution, but still these characters were persisted by uh, individuals for many generations. So even that one could not be explained properly through natural uh, theory of natural selection because the, as per theory of natural selection, only the favorable characters will be passed on to the next generation. So the over specialized uh, structures, the presence of uh, vestigial organs, all these are actually uh, remain ex unexplained as per the theory of natural selection. And uh, Darwin also laid emphasis uh, on slow and small variations. So, if so, how can uh, like uh, the gradual evolution of the eye of vertebrates could be explained? So, uh, many uh, like wing structure, slight variations in the wing structure and uh, such kind of uh, uh, behaviors like mimicry and all could not be properly explained through this one, uh, through the theory of natural selection. So, natural selection is not the primary factor in evolution or it is not the only factor in evolution. It is only a part of the full uh, uh, explanation for the process of evolution. So it accounts for the survival rather than the arrival of the fittest. Okay. So evolution is not a uh, like a process resulting in the uh, what you call uh, the fittest but it is actually uh, a process that helps for the survival of the fittest. So, while accepting natural selection as one explanation for adap adaptation, uh, biologists consider the mutations are most significant in the origin of species because mutations are responsible for the development of variations and it is these variations that later develop uh, result in the uh, what you call uh, speciation or the species form. Okay. So, this is about the um, comparison of Darwinism with Lamarckism and limitations to the theory of natural selection.